Sitting, flashing neons, and idling cylinders with good times and bad. Kind of a kind of a Midwestern Times Square. Our town's action alley. Tell me, is it the crack of the pool balls? Neon buzzing, telephones ringing at your second cousin. Is it the barmaid to smile? Corner of her eye, magic of the melancholy tearing your eye. Exit kind of quiver down in the cold, 'cause you're dreaming of them Saturdays that came before, and now you're stumbling, you're stumbling onto the heart of Saturday night. The Avenue's blossomed right on schedule again this year. Mostly, it's the young who flock here now, cruise and parade, watching, being watched. Now, this year, there's a new face. The furrowed brow of middle-aged memories and ambitions loom over this historic street. Peering down from towers a few blocks away are the merchants, the developers, and the politicians murmuring, "This year, we ought to do something." We'll be doing some cruising ourselves this evening to check the pulse of the avenue and sift through some of the plans of those who would work their will here. Here, at the heart of a Saturday night. Avenue strip glistens for about eight blocks through downtown. At its upper end, the marquees buzz with Hollywood's latest, or a rock and roll one night stand. At its lower end, the strip shows mingle with the gay bars, and here at the center, a collage of working class bars, fast food chains, newsstands, two bit arcades, adult bookstores, and movie houses. Are all a backdrop for the nightly sidewalk circus. Sometimes this is better than watching TV. Sometimes it is better. Come here and watch Hennepin Avenue. Get to see what's happening for a dime cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sightsee. They're watching us and we're watching them. So they say, look at the streets, and we're saying, look at the freaks. <laughs> Hennepin oh, Avenue is the beautifulest place you ever see. Come away from there. There's yeah. lesbians very, very and there's homosexual. <laughs> and I just love it. Glory to God. I believe that God's going to shake up the city of Minneapolis like it's never been shaken before. We're in the midst of revival. The men in the black and whites watch the parade too. But their eyes see another Hennepin Avenue, for the small area they patrol along the street has a higher crime rate than any other district in the city. 
Take a few of these victims have been knocked down and robbed. They'll tell you it's a dangerous street. Had a shooting the other day down on Third Street. Killed a man. That's about as dangerous as you can get. Most of the serious incidents break out off the brightly lit avenue, along the darkened corridors between the office towers and the warehouses. Out on the strip, fights, drunks, gamblers, prostitutes, car thieves, and traffic accidents are all in a night's work. And while all this action is part of the avenue's excitement, it troubles many of those who work and play here. Um, you see the, you see, you see the, the so-called uh, hustlers, you know, trying to hustle. Hustlers, the pimps and the simps. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people coming in running like that for the the pimps, you know, people sitting out here trying to pick up ladies. I wouldn't walk down the street alone any time of the night, though. It's crazy. Now, if you want to do something, get some of these young girls off the streets. That's what you do. We might beat some facts up. <laughs> you can always get in a play on Hampton Avenue if you want. <laughs> yeah. You know, until someone really decides they're just going to clean out the whole thing, you know, we're kind of sitting in the middle of a, an ocean, you know, full of you know, junk around here. This year, attention to the Avenue's troubles has focused here, dead center on the strip at Moby Dick's Bar. A huge watering hole packed on any weekend night with a young, racially mixed crowd. Drawn by the informal atmosphere, the pinball machines, the pool and foosball tables, and by the large, low-priced drinks, which are a specialty of the house. Over the past few years, an extraordinary number of fights have broken out in and around the bar, like this altercation recorded by a WCCO camera crew late last summer, just outside Moby's. A special state crime study recently revealed that Hennepin Avenue has more assaults than any other section of the city. But even taking this high rate as a base, Moby Dick's has at least five times as many incidents associated with its operation than would be expected. Police records show that nearly three-fourths of the assaults involve the club's bouncers, like Clarence Kramer, who jumped in to stop this fight. A recent survey by the Minneapolis Police Department showed that in nearly half of the 63 assaults they handled at Moby's over the last two years, someone required medical attention, including one man who ended up in intensive care with a collapsed lung after being bounced from the bar. On several occasions, customers have charged the bouncers themselves with assault, and in one case, the bouncer was convicted. Several civil suits have been filed against the bar as a result of encounters with its staff. And just a few weeks ago, a man who stabbed Bouncer Kramer and two other people last winter was acquitted of the charges after pleading to the jury that he had acted in self-defense. Obi Dix is what you'd call uh, the best bar in town, and the clientele that hang out there aren't what you call the best in town either. They get drunk and they want to fight, and the bouncers have to deal with them. The only time they ever have to, it, you know, at all touch somebody or anything is just to protect themselves. Uh, downtown Hennepin Avenue here, there's a lot of weird people walking around sometime out in the alley and stuff at night, late at night, and we've just had a tough time keeping it, you know, safe in there for our customers. But uh, the bar itself is not rough, and our bouncers are not rough. Despite Gold's protests that his problems are his customers, not his staff, when the City Council's Consumer Services Committee called him in last winter, he arrived with a long list of policy changes he had made, including the firing of one bouncer, dressing the rest in new monogram sports coats, reducing their work schedule to allow them to cool off, and outlawing any swearing at troublesome customers. All those changes, it seems, a tacit admission that the bar's management had been in some measure responsible for the violence. Just a half block away, at Scotty's on 7th, a posh disco bar, they mix $2 drinks, collect a cover charge, and enforce their dress code. This is not the place where you would go and uh, get uh, intoxicated and, and rowdy and, and uh, scream and holler. And I think that uh, 
what Moby Dix has to do is upgrade just a little bit, change their atmosphere a little bit, uh, not be, uh, not continue to uh, to uh, support the type of violent atmosphere that they've created over there, and it has. It's been scary for uh, for people on Hennepin Avenue. By all accounts, the violence at Moby's has diminished over the past few months, but the city is keeping it under close observation. It's placed the bar on informal probation for the rest of the summer and is threatened to take away its license if the problems resurface. Unanimously, the businessmen we talked to along the avenue feel that more patrolmen walking the beat here would work wonders in controlling the street's problems. In fact, McDonald's now hires off-duty cops like Tom Tripp to patrol their restaurant on weekends. And if they did put one or two more in, it would make everybody feel safer as far as uh, the, on the avenue. People want to uh, feel safe and they want to be in a nice, clean spot. So when we ran into the police chief and his deputy out strolling the avenue one Saturday night, we put the question to them. What about more cops on the avenue? And we just don't have the people. But uh, we hope to turn that around. It's starting the 1st of June, so the uh, first area that we're going to work on is the downtown area here, this first precinct, because that is uh, where there are more, more officers needed than any other part of the city. Get some people out on the street here and help clean it up a little bit. The city is also developing some new ideas to dim the parade of alcoholics wandering up and down the avenue. It's all part of a spring cleanup. New beatmen on the way, the vice squad on the prowl, applying the pressure to Moby Dix. However, these efforts will soon be dwarfed by the plans being drafted by downtown businessmen and developers. We'll examine their designs on the avenue in a moment. But Eddie Alexander is all smiles, even though city center will eliminate some of his Hennepin Avenue holdings. The triple X-rated Astor Theater and the Gopher, once a first run house, now used for X-rated and less sensational movies. Eddie has seen all this before. When the city moved in to buy out the theater and bookstore he and his brother Ferris owned on Lake Street, the brothers struck a good deal on the buildings and their movie gear, then turned around and bought some of the equipment back, turning a nice profit in the process. The Alexanders were paid supposedly $150,000 for the equipment. Uh, the main items of value were the projectors, the large projectors. They, uh, several months later, they paid $6,000 and got those projectors back. When we asked Yeti about the escapade, he said no, he'd never seen those projectors again. But the South Side paper turned up some interesting pictures, showing a couple of Alexander's hired hands loading the gear into a rented truck. They're very smart and shrewd uh, businessmen and invest in uh, property where they see future development coming and uh, they're aware that the city does not want to relocate them so they can uh, strike some very good bargains and uh, make off very well. There's an old saying, money talks and bullshit walks. In other words, you got to be compensated. The city should be a bit more wary of the Alexanders this time around and many of those who support the city center project are happy to see the brothers moved out of the block, reducing the string of sex shops they run along the avenue. So no, we would not be able to endure the cost of doing business on Hennepin Avenue once redeveloped. <clears throat> and that's true of most every business presently on the avenue. For operations like Schinders, to whom the avenue has been home for decades, there is an even greater fear that as the downtowners move in to develop and clean up the avenue, they may destroy its historic character. When I was a child of five, sitting in my father's restaurant on 6th and Hennepin, uh, I remember drunks in and out of the door, you know, prostitutes in and out of the door. Uh, the life then was uh, a 
approximately the same as it is now in, in the kinds of people you had to deal with. And that's what made it exciting then, and that's what makes it exciting now. Uh, the avenue has its own past, and it, uh, it's a creature of uh, an urban environment, uh, and you just don't monkey with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.